Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Um, please follow along with some notes, okay? And please follow along closely because this lesson may be a little bit confusing. Okay, so you may need to rewatch it or ask some questions later on. Okay, I will attach the problem set to this. Please uh, do not turn in the problem set. I will send a video of me completing the problem set at the end of the school day, but um, try to do it on your own beforehand, okay? So today's objective states, I can restate a ratio in terms of its value. I can use the value of the ratio to problem solve by writing and solving equations. Okay, so today we're gonna to be using the value of a ratio. Okay, we're gonna uh, get that information from a table of ratios, and then we're gonna write equations okay uh to solve these to solve these problems all right so let's move on exercise one george is mixing a special shade of orange paint he mixed one gallon of red paint with three gallons of yellow paint based on this ratio which of the following statements are true okay so let's look at the first statement three-fourths of a four gallon mix would be yellow paint this is true because in total, if our ratio is one to three, red to yellow, in total there are four gallons, okay? Three-fourths of those four gallons are yellow paint, and that is true, okay? Next statement, every one gallon of yellow paint requires one-third gallon of red. This is also true, okay? If we look at these cubes over here on the side, okay? There are three yellow and one red, just like our ratio. But if we only had one yellow, okay, we would have to cut the red into thirds, and each third would go to one yellow, okay? <clears throat> the next statement, every one gallon of red paint requires three gallons of yellow paint. This is also true, okay? All this is doing is explaining our ratio. Okay, next statement. There is one gallon of red paint and a four gallon mix of orange paint. Okay, George is mixing orange paint. Okay, that's why he's mixing red and yellow together. So in, there's one gallon of red paint and a four gallon mix of orange paint. This is true. Okay, last one. <clears throat> There are two gallons of yellow paint and a four and an eight gallon mix of orange paint. So all we're doing is doubling our ratio. Okay. So when I double it, looking at these cubes, are there two gallons of yellow paint? No, there are six. There are two gallons of red paint. So this is false. All right, guys, let's move on. <clears throat> so exercise two says, based on the information on red and yellow paint, given in exercise one, complete the table below. <clears throat> so we had one to three, okay? Two to six, three to nine, four to 12, and five to 15, okay? The relationship here, R, red paint, okay? The red paint column, R, okay? I am multiplying by three to get the number of yellow paint, okay? So it doesn't matter what number is in the red column. I'm always going to multiply it by three to get the number in the yellow column, okay? So here would be two times three equals six, four times three equals 12, and five times three equals 15, okay? And that just shows the relationship between <clears throat> the red paint to yellow paint, okay? So let's move on. So now, looking at this table, the same table we've just been working on, imagine that we want to make orange paint to cover an entire wing of our school, and we have 100 gallons of red paint, how would we figure out how many gallons of yellow paint to use? Well, 
Imagine I added another row here. Okay. And in the number of gallons of paint, of red paint, I have 100. Okay. So what is the relationship? What are we doing to the red column, the red paint column, to get yellow paint? Well, all of these are being multiplied by 3. Okay. So I'm going to multiply 100 times 3, and it's going to give me 300 gallons of yellow paint. And our relationship is 100 times 3 equals 300. So how many gallons of yellow paint will we use? 300 gallons. Okay. So how would we write this relationship as an equation? How would we write this relationship as an equation? So we have to look at our relationship first, okay? We know that we're multiplying by three, okay? So <clears throat> we are gonna start off with y equals, okay? How am I getting to the number in the yellow paint column? How am I getting there? I'm multiplying the number in the red column, R, okay? We're going to call it R, and we're always multiplying it by 3. Okay, so our equation to that represents this relationship would be Y equals 3R, okay? Y represents Y represents a variable, okay? A variable is a number that represents a number. So Y represents a number in the yellow paint column, okay? R represents a number in the red paint column, okay? So if I substitute numbers for this equation, Okay, and remember, when you have a variable next to a number, that means to multiply, okay? So, if I substitute a number in the red column, I'm going to go with 3, okay? So, y equals 3 times 3 equals 9. So, y equals 9, okay? So, this is telling me when r is 3 y equals 9, okay? And that is our equation, y equals 3, r, okay? Now, it's what if we wanted an equation to tell us how much red paint to use if we are given the amount of yellow paint? So now we're flipping it, okay? We are flipping our equation. Instead of y equals, we are going to do R equals, okay? So, to get the yellow paint, we multiplied R, the numbers in the red paint column, by 3, okay? But now, I'm trying to find R. So, what would be the opposite of multiplying, okay? It would be dividing, okay? So, instead of multiplying, we are going to do R equals, y divided by 3, okay? Or we can do r equals 1 third y, okay? And this is, this is the method that they, they um, are looking for, okay? But both of these are right, okay? And I'm going to show you why 1 third is the same thing as multiplying. Multiplying by one third is the same thing as dividing. Sorry, okay, so I'm gonna substitute R equals one third. I need a number to substitute with Y. Okay, I'm gonna pick six, okay? So times six. When we multiply a fraction with the whole number, we have to write it like this, six over one. So now I'm going to multiply across and I get 6 over 3 which equals 2 ok 
okay? So now, when y equals 6, r equals 2, okay? So our equation would be r equals 1 third y, or r equals y divided by 3. And that's when we're trying to find the red paint, the number of red paint. <clears throat> All right, guys, let's move on. Okay, so exercise four tells us, during a particular US Air Force training, the ratio of the number of men to the number of women was six to one. Using the ratio table provided below to create at least two equations that model the relationship between the number of men and the number of women participating in this training exercise. Okay, so I want you to try this one on your own. Pause the video, okay? And when you're finished, play, uh, click play again. So you should have tried this on your own, okay? Um, we're talking about uh, US Air Force training. We're comparing men and women, okay? So for every uh, six men, there are one woman. So I'm gonna write six and one. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, 12, 18, 24, 30. Okay, so let's find the relationship, okay? What are we doing to the women's column to get the men's column? Well, we are multiplying by six, okay? Also, <clears throat> so if we start off with M equals, okay? How are we gonna find out the equation for M? What are we doing to find M, the number of men? Well, we're multiplying W, okay, women, the number of women, by 6. So M would equal 6W, okay? It doesn't matter what number W is, we're always multiplying it by 6. So now, if we start off with W, this gets a little bit tricky, okay? What if I'm trying to find the value of women to men? Okay, if I have the ratio one to six, women to men, okay? And the value, remember, is a, a reduced fraction, okay? So this would be one over six. Well, we just plug this value in to our equation and multiply. So we take W equals one six M. Okay, and I'll show you why this works. Find a number in the M column. Let's do 12. 1, 6 times 12 equals 12 over 6, which equals 2. So when M is 12, W equals 2. Okay? Now, if 200 women participating participated in the training exercise... Use one of your equations to calculate the number of men who participated. Okay, so now we're going to use this equation, M equals 6W, okay? And we're going to plug in 200 women for W. So now our equation turns into M equals 6 times 200, okay? When we multiply that, we get... 1,200, so M equals 1,200. So there are 1,200 men when there are 200 women. All right, guys. Kevin is trying to run a half marathon. His training program represents that he run for five minutes and walk for one minute. Let R represent the number of minutes running and let W represent the number of minutes walking, okay? So for every uh, five minutes running, he walks for one minute. So 10 to two. Now it jumps to 20, so this has to be four, okay? And then it gives you eight, so this has to be 40, and it gives you 50, so this has to be 10. So what are we doing to the minutes to get the minutes running, we're multiplying 
by 5. Okay? Multiplying these all by 5. Okay? So that's our relationship. We're multiplying by 5. So let's see. What is the value of the ratio? Remember, the value of a ratio is a fraction. Okay? Of the number of minutes walking to the number of minutes running. Okay, walking to running. This would be 1 to 5, which equals 1 fifth. Okay, that is our value. So now, what equation could you use to calculate? What equation could you use to calculate the minutes spent walking if you know the minutes spent running? What equation could we use? Okay. We are just going to use this value that we found and plug it in to our equation. Okay. So W is going to equal one fifth R. Okay. And I'll show you why this is true. Okay. We're going to plug in a number for r, so let's do 10. 1 fifth times 10 over 1. We multiply across, we get 10 over 5, which equals 2. So when r is 10, w is 2. Okay. Just be uh, remember and be very careful to see what they're asking for first. Okay, so calculate the minutes spent walking, which is W. So we're going to put W equals, if you know the minutes spent running. <clears throat> okay. So, lesson summary. The value of a ratio can be determined using a ratio table. This value can be used to write an equation that also represents the ratio. Okay, so looking at this table, it's just an example. All we're doing here is multiplying by 4. So if this was dogs to cats, okay, C for cats would equal D4 or 4D, okay? C equals 4D. And all this is saying is it doesn't matter what numbers in the dogs column, we're always going to multiply it by 4. Okay? And that's going to give you the number in the cats column. Okay, the multiplication table can be a valuable resource to use in seeing ratios. Different rows can be used to find equivalent ratios. Okay, guys, I'm going to send you this problem set attached to the assignment. Do not turn it in. I will post a video of me completing this problem set at the end of the school day. Okay? Good luck. Please try your best. If you get confused, that's okay. I'll re remember I'm going to go over this problem set. Okay? Have a great day, guys.